I guess to start, I've lived in Easton all of my life. Uh, graduated from Easton schools, Easton High School. Uh, that was in 59, 1959, not 1859, as some people have alluded to. Uh, went to the University of Maryland for a while, left there, uh, married my wife-to-be, Betsy Thompson. She was in a high school graduating class, lived in Oxford, so I brought her to the big city, to Easton. At that time, I think there were around 6,000 people in town, something like that. It wasn't many, so you knew everybody that you saw on the street. Went to work for an outfit called Waverly Press at the time, soon uh, to become Cadmus Journal Services. Worked there for 41 years, retired in 2002. And at that time, uh, didn't learn how to run a printing press, didn't want to know how to run a printing press. Uh, those guys were pretty much uh, uh, stationary in the day's activities. I'd like to move around a little bit. So I ran the traffic and warehousing department, the book fulfillment and uh, environmental laws and what have you. We had three children. One, the oldest boy is deceased. Uh, the youngest boy is a graduate of Eastern High School, uh, Salisbury University. and. Uh, is in business for herself now. He sells packaging supplies and, and equipment. Uh, a daughter is also an Easton High School graduate, uh, Salisbury uh, University graduate. Uh, she's now working for the federal government and uh, been uh, doing it from home now for almost two years. So I think she's found a new office. Member of the Eastern Fire Company for 60 years. And you wonder, how in the world is anybody getting into a fire company for 60 years? But it, it goes fast, and it, it was fun, and uh, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, met a lot of nice people, saw a lot of things that I wouldn't have seen if, if I was just an uh, average Joe citizen on the street. Member of the Eastern Elks Club for 56 years. I haven't been anywhere for just a short stay. I usually come and, and put my hat on the rack and stay for a while. Uh, uh, probably the oldest in tenure member of the Eastern Baptist Church. It's 70 some years and I was a member when it was across the street from the town office in a parking lot and it was destroyed by fire back in the early 50s. We, we so. have all four grandchildren now that uh, have graduated from college, uh, Chesapeake or Salisbury, uh, James Madison, West Virginia University. So we, we get around a little bit and the, and the kids are all doing well, taking care of themselves. They're all married, uh, one to go. And uh, we now have great grandchildren, which is, you know, you often laugh about sending the grandchildren home with their parents when you're tired of playing with them, and it's uh, doubly important with the great-grandchildren, so now you have, have all of them around. What a lucky. I guess a lot of that was the influence of my mother, but for 43 years she was uh, <coughs> the forerunner of the current town manager's position. She started in 1943 and retired in 86. At that time, she knew I was looking at, you know, what was going on in the town and why did he do it that way? If I was there, I would have done it this way or I would have got this group working in a certain direction and what have you. And she says, you have lost your mind. And I thought, what a nice answer that I lost my mind and uh, because I want to do things my way and, and what I consider the right way. And when I got into... Uh, the, the town politics. At that time, uh, guys had been there for years and years and years, and uh, it, it was time for me to get in there and, and see what I could do. And that was basically, a, I guess, the influence of my mother uh, going up there all the time. I knew everybody in the town government. Uh, it, it, it was just time. Well, I, I like to look around and, and see some of the stuff that's got <clears throat> my touch to it. The uh, 
memorial down on the corner of Dover and West Street that's that's to the uh, the volunteers, the first responders, and and uh, people in, that have made the town of Easton what it is today. Uh, I like to look at the the parks and and stuff that we've we've had going on. I like to look at our uh, our uh, kind of our relationship with the business community and and the fact that we've been responsive, the fact that we've tried to help wherever we could. Uh, we've we've made great strides in 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 uh, business parks and and so forth. And I guess the big thing right now that there's two things that if we could do a little bit better, I, I would think uh, that I, I'd really accomplish something. And one of those is housing. Uh, that's for all levels of people. We, we, we just don't seem to have enough of a supply. So that, that would work. Uh, we've done a lot of things to help people get into housing that's, that's available. We, do, we just don't have that inventory. And the the other thing would be to work with uh, the University of Maryland medical system and get this new hospital off the ground and get it moving in the right direction. And I I think they're they're moving well now, and it's just a question let's let's keep it going. Let's get this this hospital up. But when I first became mayor, Easton was kind of in an economic downturn. Uh, we spent our reserves. We didn't have any money in the bank. I can remember one time paying a bill with a credit card, and I thought, uh-oh, this, this is not the way to run a business. So I made a couple of changes real, real quick. Uh, one, of, one of those was uh, we, we stopped borrowing money. We went to see some of our creditors and say, hey, this is an issue we're working out of. You've got to give us a little bit of time. Uh, we, we set up a, a budget stabilization fund, which is just a fancy word for a rainy day fund. Uh, all of a sudden, we, we had some cash reserves. We were starting to pay our bills. And uh, the financial community recognized it because our, our financial rating went to AA plus, which was about as high as we were going to hope to get as far as a small town. So th those kind of things, you know, you, you see what's on the surface. You, you try to help out, and you do what you think is right, and it works. And people bought into it, and we've been going great guns ever since. We have a community movement, I think, in the right direction. Uh, again, we, we have some great people working for us. We've got a first-class fire department, a first-class police department. We've got workers for the town that, are, as a whole, are the best we've ever had. We've got people really that have bought into the concept of, of how we do things, and uh, it's, it seems to be working. Well, I'm, I'm not interested in retiring. Uh, it would bore my wife to tears, I guess, if I was around the house all day long. Uh, there, there's still a lot of things that I'd like to see happen in the town of Easton, and I want to see them happen. Uh, with with me pulling the strings, if you will, uh, getting some of this stuff off off and running. Uh, I've heard a couple of comments like, "Hey, that guy's too old," and this this is coming from uh, a county that's got the highest median age in the state of. So if I'm too old, what's that say about the other half of the population? Uh, should they go somewhere and just sit down and, and, and just wait and things pass them by? And then one, one of uh, the people has made a comment that we need to move uh, and make sure that Easton keeps moving in the right direction. That's, uh, uh, that's a lot of bull. Uh, we, we have uh, projects on the tables that, that uh, uh, give us a 10-year plan for, for infrastructure growth. We've got parks and recreation uh, facilities underway. We, we've got a job retention and a job recruitment uh, group working very hard. We're putting up uh, business uh, parks and, and what have you, bringing businesses into town. We've got as many jobs as we've ever had before. 
and we'd like to just, just keep bringing in more and more quality jobs so that the kids would have a place to come home after school and, and uh, when they get out of the military service and so forth. So I, I like, like the way we're, we're doing things, and, and it just seems to me to be the right way to do it. And hopefully I can get 50% uh, plus one of the people that feel the same way I do. Well, one of those is going to be finding a place for people to live. We do have a lot of uh, uh, projects on the table. And incidentally, I, I mentioned that, missed mentioning that uh, I started thinking I was going to lose track of all the projects we were, had going on and started making a list. And that list is up to 61. So we've got 61 projects either started or underway or on the books to do. And there's not many other things you can think of that besides that 61 that we've still got to do, but we do have a lot of projects on the table. And housing has, has got to be right up there near number one. Uh, we do have some, some plans in, in effect. We're, we're doing work down at the hill with a few houses, but that's just scratching the surface. Uh, we've set up a grant program where people that uh, already live in the neighborhood who have homes that need help, but their financial condition doesn't allow them to go out and just borrow money. So we've got a very low interest rate loan that we're giving people to put a new roof on or put new windows in or something like that, make their house good. Uh, so that that's a, an issue. We need to really keep the police and the fire department up to snuff. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the, that the cops uh, do a great job. Uh, we are shorthanded right now, but they're busy recruiting. And it's the same way all over the country right now, that, that uh, police officers are in, in great demand. And we've got a, a young force. I, I sometimes don't believe they're all 21, but, but they really seem to do a great job, and they, they do very well. And it's up to us to keep it moving in that direction. The fire department's the same way. They're right now starting a training ground program out by the airport. And uh, we need to help them keep that going. And the other would be the medical services. So those would be my top three. We get the housing up. We do the things with the fire department and the police department. And we get the medical service moving and uh, if we're really going to get the regional medical center, let's get it. Uh, I hear all the time of people who are having trouble finding a, a family doc a doctor, especially people that have moved into the area trying to get established. So th those kind of things are, are going to be there for a while, but we're going to be plugging away at them, and uh, we're going to show some signs of improvement. You will, you'll be surprised. Okay, this, this is a quote from Robert Willie. I've poured a lot into a record that shows hard work, open-mindedness, ability to work with anyone, above, above all, high integrity, and ability to, to succeed. But uh, all I'm asking is be open-minded. Don't think I'm too old because I can still outwork most people. And... Uh, We'll, we'll get this thing straightened out and, and get moving in the right direction and keep moving in the right direction.